Hello everyone, and welcome to Etalon. A couple of weeks ago, I was reached out to by Eligu, which is a 3D printing company, and was asked if I would be interested in printing and painting their recent collaborative anime figure with artist Yuka. Of course, I just had to say yes, but thought as I've just come back from my break, it would be nice to catch up with you all and have a nice chatty Q&A creation time together. Before we get started, of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video if you like it, and comment. I love reading all of your comments. With that all being said, let's get started. First things first, I'm going to be heading to my garage, to the printer that Eligu so kindly sent me. We have the Eligu Mars 2 Pro Printer, the washing machine, and the UV light cure machine. Normally I like to print files in parts because it makes it easier to handle when you're painting, but damn it just looks so cool coming out of the printer like this in one giant piece. Time to clean and cure the figure. First, I remove the figure from the build plate and set it up in the washing machine. Here, I'm filling up the tub with some methylated spirits. This will clean all the uncured resin off the figure. Of course, here's me fiddling around with the machine for a good five minutes, not knowing how on earth to turn this thing on. Eventually, I had to call my partner to come help me. I can't turn on the wash and cure machine. Can you come help me? Um, I like plugged in, mm -hmm. but I just don't know how to get it to turn on. Oh, for God's sake. So embarrassing, he literally just held the button down and it turned on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I put this figure on to cure for about a minute and a half, basically until it stops being sticky. The details on this figure are insane. The lacing, the hair, it's all just so beautiful. Let's get into painting. The paints that I'm going to be using today are from Vallejo, Games Workshop Citadel, Chimera Colors, and Scale 75. The brushes I'm going to be using are from my Broken Toad MK3 mini series set. To lay down the base colours of this figure, I went in off camera with a layer of airbrushing. For the smaller areas, I'm going to be going in by hand, layering down the colours and then going into the details a little bit later. Let's get into our Q&A. I got a lot of questions in regards to my Monster High revamp series. Will I be continuing the series? Will there be any other characters that I'll make? or if I'll be moving on to another property, like Ever After High for instance. Just to start off, I wanted to thank everyone for their support on the series. It seriously 
just so so appreciated for everyone checking out those videos and being so kind the support is just so encouraging and i really really appreciate it for the series though i'm not too sure i obviously just finished doing laguna which is the seventh installment of the main characters i guess and i will be having a video with all the dolls i've done putting them all together just to cap off the series for now and then decide on what I wanted to do if I wanted to keep going with it or not. Of course I'm always happy to go in for a season two if people are interested. I have about nine, nine or ten I think, Monster High characters ready to go. The only concern I have if I keep it up as a consistent and regular series is I do get worried if I get typecasted like it's the only thing that people want to see from me. You know, because I love designing original characters, I love doing other kinds of characters. I guess I just would worry that people would only come to see that. <laughs> Which is, you know, I appreciate everyone checking it out nonetheless. I think where that comes from though is that I've been really itching to try out some other series as well. And I think I just worry that if I continue doing that as a frequent installment like I have been doing with the ones that I've been doing recently I'm worried that I'll end up being kind of lazy and pushing back the series that I've been wanting to do but you know I think I'm just worrying a bit uh, but in terms of revamping or designing from another property like Ever After High or Bratz or Winx those are the most common ones that I was asked I'm not too sure again I'm worried about being typecasted but as well, it really depends on the type of series. I don't think I would ever go into Ever After High or Winx, just because I don't really know anything about them. They weren't really things that I watched. I wouldn't even say I'm a fan of them because I just don't know anything about them. And I think when you're doing a series like the revamping series, you really want to do characters that, you know, you, you're familiar with and you enjoy. <laughs> um, so that's why I don't think I would ever go into Ever Half to High or Winx, just because, yeah, I I have no idea what that they're about. <laughs> um, Bratz, maybe, but I think I'm leaning towards exploring different content just for now. But, you know, I'll probably eat my words, I'll probably end up making a Bratz series, but yeah, it just depends on, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a bit of an over planner, so if I decide to do something, I, if I've got things already in the works it just kind of pushes it back so I don't know uh, I'm not really sure <laughs> if I do it I do it um, but let me know in the comments below if you want to see that um, it would be very helpful <laughs> what are your favorite films what are your favorite shows what are a few of your favorite animes um, basically what's your favorite media I guess um, my favorite all-time film I think would have to be the 2015 adaptation of The Little Prince. The animation, the story, the music, it's, oh my gosh, it's just so amazing. No matter how many times I see it, I always cry at the end. It's just so good, criminally underrated. Um, not many people have seen it, but I would highly, highly recommend going to watch it. In terms of shows, I definitely like things like Castlevania, What We Do in the Shadows, Clone Wars. I love watching cartoons, so like Over the Garden Wall, Adventure Time, and We Bear Bears. I finished watching Our Flag Means Death recently with my partner, and oh my gosh, so romantic. Oh, it was so good. I loved it. I really, really want a season two. In terms of animes though, I don't tend to watch many anymore, um, definitely not as many as I used to when I was a teenager or in my early 20s. I don't really keep up with seasonal releases and rarely start new animes just because I'm so busy all the time as well. Not a lot tends to spark my interest or keep my interest if I'm watching it. Nonetheless, some of my favourite animes over the years are definitely Evangelion more specifically the four films over the shows. I also love Slice of Life stuff, so Kaon, My Little Monster, and Tomoko Market. I also love anime films like Howl's Moving Castle, Paprika, and Silent Voice. 
I would say Demon Slayer, but I am in no way caught up. I haven't watched the Entertainment District arc yet, because I've been waiting for the whole season to be dubbed so I can watch it while I work. Would you ever make a doll inspired by one of your birds? Uh, if you don't know, I have two Konyas. I have a green cheek Konya called Fergus, and I have a black cap Konya called Apollo. Um, totally, I've been wanting to do this since I adopted them. I'm just not very good at anthropomorphic characters. I've been wanting to do them in the Animal Crossing style. It always just gets shelved for later. But yeah, I do want to make little dolls of them or little figurines. I even have been going through like if they were in the Animal Crossing world or their little anthropomorphic world, what would their jobs be? What would their um, outfits look like? Uh, stuff like that and it's so much fun to kind of take inspiration from your little little pets. Yeah, it just at the end of the day I'm not very good at drawing little little birds. But yeah, I definitely definitely want to make little figurines of them. I think it would be just criminally cute. <laughs> Where to find dolls? I had a lot of people asking specifically for in Sydney as well in regards to this question. Um, so I think I might actually go out and do a vlog or something about doll hunting because I feel, I don't know, I think that op shop and thrifting culture is a little bit different in Australia um, because I've never had luck finding a doll at a thrift like a thrift shop or an op shop here in Australia um, but then again I don't think I go to very good places maybe if I went into Sydney City I'd have more luck but yeah I was thinking about making a vlog about actually actively going doll hunting seeing if there's any um, hidden gem shops so let me know if you would want to see that but generally for the dolls that I have I will be checking eBay and Gumtree every day or every couple of days just to see what's being sold, if there's new listings. Yeah, um, that's just where I get dolls from. Either that or I go to like Kmart, Big W, Casey's Toys, but that's once every blue moon because I don't particularly like buying brand new dolls. I think it's better to buy ones that would generally go to landfill because then you're bringing a new life to something that has already been discarded as opposed to kind of fueling more plastic that goes out into the world. I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's just where I find dolls and stuff. Have you ever been through art block so hard you couldn't bring yourself slash were scared to make art? How do you deal with art block? And what gives you motivation to make dolls? Uh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, yes, of course, definitely. It can feel as if the whole world is crushing against you, as if nothing matters but everything does. I feel like over time it's gotten easier to deal with art block or even art distress. I was going to say it depends on what is causing the art block in the first place be it feeling depressed, overworked, stressed, or disappointed. But sometimes you just feel burnt out for no reason, and that's completely valid as well. When art block happens, I just try to focus on not forcing creativity to come back. Instead, taking that time to be inspired again. Maybe that means starting a new show, playing a game, um, or just taking that time to yourself to do things that you enjoy regardless of if it's related to your work. Something that I sometimes like to do is just kind of go around, go for a walk, go around the shops, stuff like that, and just start taking mind notes <laughs> of things that I find interesting. Maybe it's a page of a book, maybe it's an architecture of a piece of building, maybe it's the way that a certain fabric feels um, and just enjoying that time but not being like oh yeah and then I'll, I've got to make a doll immediately I've got to, I've got to do this I've got to do that just enjoying the time 
to yourself. I think that art block is kind of a byproduct of the need for rest and I think that taking that time to yourself and being attentive to the need for rest is the only way really to get out of it in my opinion. It sucks so much when that happens but you will get through it. Um, you just gotta take care of yourself. <laughs> These were questions I was not prepared <laughs> to get at all. Um, when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did I want to be when I was a child? Um, what did I do before my art career? How long have I been customizing? And what did I do before? I started customizing in ooh, the start of 2019, I think. What did I want to be when I was a child? I definitely wanted to be a paleontologist, which is the study of fossils and evolution. I always was so so interested in it. I always wanted to go to do a uni bachelor's in it. It was my goal throughout high school um, and it was just kind of what I wanted to do. But unfortunately after doing my final year exams for high school I, I just didn't make it. I didn't make the cut <laughs> to get in. So I ended up doing a communications diploma and then later went to university to do a bachelor's in communications. I was diagnosed in my final semester of uni with learning and cognitive disabilities, which was pretty whack. After finishing uni, I went on to do placements, internships, and worked a couple of jobs in the field that I was in. But eventually, not to go into all depressing detail, but that chapter of my life just ended. A couple of years later, I decided to start doing art again, specifically learning 3D modeling and um, as you can see with the channel, it's all customizing. And yeah, here I am now. I didn't really know as a kid, teen or young adult, you could ever do a career in art in this field, um, this kind of realm that I seem to sit in. But I think if you would have told me back then, I would have been dismissive of it anyway, um, not feeling as if I would have been able to do it anyway. But yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is I was in the field of comms and I wanted to be a scientist but sadly because of disabilities I unfortunately couldn't make that possible but ended up finding a career I enjoy much much more. Um, I'm sorry if that was really sad I didn't mean to that to be depressing but you know these things happen. So at this point in the video I was pretty much done with the figure but wanted to look into protecting it. I actually had to start this figure again at one point because Fergus pushed it off the desk and broke it. I went to Kmart and was able to get one of these glass food storage container things, which when turned upside down, looks somewhat like a glass case. Once I was back home, I just needed to clean it off and give the wood a paint with some black spray paint. Pretty good for $4. And here's the finished figure. If you want to try and paint this figure yourself, I'll leave a link to Yuka's page in the description box below, and of course a link to the Eligu page as well. A huge thank you to Eligu for sending me the Mars 2 Pro Printer 
as well as the wash and cure machines to try out for this video. If you have any other questions um, that you have for me that I didn't have a chance to answer in this video, do let me know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below to never miss a video. A huge thank you as always to my Patreon supporters as well. With that all being said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.